Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Mr. Ty, and in this video, we are going to be doing an in-depth review of the Source One version 3 frame by TBS. We're also going to be showing you step-by-step -step how to put it together, and I'm going to give you my honest opinion on what I think about this frame. Now, we're going to go over a lot of stuff in this video, so I'm going to have a table of contents down below if you want to skip around, maybe skip the build portion. But yeah, hopefully you guys find this helpful. So let's get right into it. So this is the Source One V3 frame. It comes with a bottom plate, top plate, brace plate, two camera plates, four arms, a bag of screws, and eight standoffs. Also has a battery pad. Okay, so now that we have everything on the bag, let's go over the hardware. We have eight 30 millimeter standoffs, four 14 millimeter bolts, and a whole bunch of these 10 millimeter bolts. So first, go ahead and grab your bottom plate Grab one of your 14 millimeter bolts and stick it through the hole right here in the middle between the slot and this bigger hole on the inside of the plate. Then go ahead and take a 10 millimeter bolt and stick it on the outside of this little arm on that bottom plate. Then go ahead and slip your arm over top of both of those. And now you can go ahead and take your top plate, line it up with those bolts, go ahead and flip it over and you can tighten that down. Okay, now go ahead and do that for all four of the arms. So now that you have all four of the arms on, you can see that those 14 millimeter bolts are sticking up in the center. The reason for that is that's where your 30 by 30 stack is going to go. However, if you're using a 20 by 20 stack, you would use these 10 millimeter bolts instead of those 14 millimeter bolts, and you would go ahead and take these um, 10 millimeter bolts and you would stick it through the frame like this in the center four holes before you ever attach the arms. Now one cool thing about this frame is it actually has mounting for three different 20 by 20s. You have one right here in the center, one right here and what I'm assuming is the back, and you have one right here in the front. Now the one in the front actually takes um, M2 screws it looks like, and these are M3. So your standard screws will not fit there. However, the screws that that is intended for is something like a Tarsier camera or um, the Foxier split camera uh, can be mounted right here really easily. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the standoffs. Just go ahead and take one of your bolts, push it through one of the eight holes on the outside of the frame, and then go ahead and screw down your standoff. Like so. Go ahead and do that for this hole, this one, this one, this one, this one, and these two in the back. Okay, so after you go ahead and install all eight of the standoffs, you can take your two camera plates and you'll see that there's a little notch right here cut into the frame. Go ahead and stick that right into that notch. It's really tight, which is actually pretty surprising for a budget frame like this that the tolerances are this good. Yeah, that's really nice. All right, then you can go ahead and take your top plate, slide it over that camera plate, now depending on how tight it is, you might have to file it down, but you shouldn't have to, and they actually fit really snugly. I really like the way that those camera plates fit, there's almost no play there. Then go ahead and fasten down eight bolts into the standoffs to secure your top plate. Go ahead and do that for all eight. All right, so the only thing we have left to do is install the battery pad. Now, I personally wouldn't use this battery pad. I would use Oma Grip. However, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you how to put that on. But first, we're gonna go ahead and get a weight on the drone without the battery pad. All 
So it's coming out to 135.9 grams, so 136 grams. With the battery pad, it comes out to 140.8 grams. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how to put this battery pad on there. First, you're going to want to punch out all these little cutouts. All right, those out of the way. And then you're going to want to go ahead and figure out exactly where all the holes line up. Huh. Which this battery pad was actually cut incorrectly. Um, if you line it up off of the cutouts in the frame, it doesn't line up with the screw holes. And if you line it up with the screw holes, it doesn't line up with the cutouts in the frame. So to compensate for that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut a little bit off of it right here so that there is room for the screw. Alright, looks like that should fit. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off half of the backing like so. And then I'm just going to line it up off these back two slots. And then peel the rest of the backing off. And just go ahead and lay it down like that. Alrighty guys, well that is how to put together the TBS Source frame. Now what is my honest opinion about this frame? Well, for $25, you really can't find another frame that is as good as this one. I am a big fan of not buying clone frames for a couple of reasons. One of the biggest reasons being that the quality just doesn't seem to be there. The arms become delaminated and break normally really easily. And the second reason is, when you buy a clone frame, you are supporting somebody stealing someone else's idea. When somebody puts a lot of effort into designing a frame, there's a lot of money that goes into product testing and getting that frame to where it is. For somebody just to come along then, rip it off and make it cheaper, really hurts the person who put all that effort into designing the frame. Now, are there drawbacks on this frame? There totally is. There is three that come to mind. The first one being that it is quite a heavy frame. Without a battery strap and without a battery pad, it is still 136 grams, which is definitely on the hefty side. The second issue that I have with this frame is that the hardware is definitely a cheaper quality hardware. These standoffs are definitely not the strongest, and in a really hard impact, you might end up bending these more likely than you would with some other standoffs that come with other frames. And third, it is a squashed X, which I personally feel doesn't fly as well as a true X or a stretch X. Now, it is just slightly a squashed X, and with the firmware on Flight One, Betaflight, and KISS nowadays, you can hardly tell the difference. But for those people who really fly a lot, you can definitely feel that there's a little bit of a wonky quality when you have all your weight going long ways and your stance is crushed in like this. That's just my personal gripe. Some people prefer this frame design. Um, so if you like squashed X's, then this is a great frame for you. But if you're new to the hobby, um, from my personal experience, I feel that squashed X's just quite don't fly as well as like a true X does. And other than that, everything else is just minor gripes. Like for example, it doesn't really have a lot of extra hardware um, and it doesn't come with battery straps. But like I said, the frame's only $25. And with the money you're saving, you can go ahead and buy those parts and it'll still be cheaper than some of the all-in-one kits that you can buy out there. Um, also, it doesn't have chamfered edges. However, most frames don't have chamfered edges and it's really easy to sand down these edges yourself. Just take some a 240 grit sandpaper and a screwdriver wrap it around the screwdriver and you can get in these little cracks and edges pretty easily uh, this frame does take a full-size camera and if you buy a little mount or use some 3d printed parts you can fit much smaller cameras like a micro size or even the new nano size cameras in here no problem 
with there being those three different places to mount um, 20 by 20s, there's definitely a lot of room in this frame. And so yeah, for $25, if you don't have, like if you're, if you're on a really tight budget and you really want a freestyle frame, this is probably the best frame you can get for the money. Now I do want to go ahead and mention a couple other frames that are also really good frames if you're willing to spend a little bit more money. The first one is going to be the Wild Willy frame. This one is a fantastic frame for people who are constantly changing their camera angle or if you're trying to do really cinematic shots. You can go all the way down to 15 degree camera angle up to 60 and that's built right in to the frame. The second frame I want to mention just got a price reduction down to $49. It used to be $100, however, you do have to buy it from Flight One to get that discount, but that's going to be the Schizo Nova frame. This frame is a true X frame. It is extremely durable, and with all this extra carbon out where your motors are, it is really hard to damage a motor. This frame is fantastic if you're going to go bashing concrete buildings because you have a lot of protection not only on your motors but all in all this frame is just built like a tank and one of the great things about this frame the dolphin one and the arc one which i'm going to talk about here in a second is they all come with lifetime warranties if you buy it from flight one it's uh, just a couple dollars to get any of the parts on the frame replaced if you happen to break it so that is also a really big plus if you're looking for you know a budget option you're not going to have to worry about breaking the parts and having to pay full price for them the third freestyle frame that i want to go ahead and mention is the frame that bob rugi aka kebab has been spending a lot of time designing this actually comes in three different variants and it falls right around the 50 dollars mark this i'm pretty sure he's calling it the glide frame and this frame looks fantastic. You can get the lightweight version, which I'm pretty sure comes in at sub 90 grams, the regular version, which I think is like 97, and then the heavy duty version, which is way more carbon than you need, and that comes in at 109, which is one of the lightest options and still keeping around that $50 mark. The only downside compared to the Wild Willy and Schizo frame is that that frame does not have a lifetime warranty on it. However, it is, like I said, only about $50, so it's not going to break the bank. The final frame I'm going to mention is not a freestyle frame, it is a racing frame. However, it is only $25, right around the exact same price as the Source One. So if you're looking for a racing frame, I would highly recommend going with something like the Arc One. It comes in three different variants. You can get it in a True X a stretched X or a hybrid like this one where the back two arms are stretched out and the front two follow the true X pattern. And this frame is only $25. Oh, and like I said before, it has a lifetime warranty. There's not another frame on the market for $25 that have a lifetime warranty like this frame does. So with that being said, what frame is best for you? Well, it really just depends. Like I said, if you want a freestyle frame and you're on a budget, go with the Source One. If you have a little bit more money to spend and you want a Bando Basher, get the Schizo. However, if you want to support Bob Rugi, his frames are fantastic as well. They just don't have that lifetime warranty. And if you're all about that cinema photography shot and you want the ability to change your camera angle up and down, the Dolphin One, which is the frame that Wild Willy flies, is also a fantastic choice with that lifetime warranty. So with all that being said, if you think I left anything out, make sure you go down in those comments and let me know. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. With that being said, guys, fly safe, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye.